Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, today let's see a few interview questions related to Terraform. So these are the most commonly asked uh, interview questions with respect to Terraform and um, these are like uh, mandatory to know as well. Okay. So the first one is like uh, what is the difference between Terraform import and uh, Terraform state command. Okay. So this is like uh, most commonly asked because in case if you delete a state file or something like how do you check and what exactly uh, the configurations it will be there in the state file and in case if you have to recover that uh, what is the command you will use so this uh, this is what exactly you will do okay in case for example if a state file is deleted and if you don't have any backup and if your environment is running then obviously like you have to use terraform import okay so it brings existing uh, cloud resources under terraform management without a uh, creating them so it will not try to recreate it will just import the configuration you can use terraform import and then uh, the name okay so that uh, it will just import it okay and terraform state so this is one of the very important things because uh, terraform it will manage the existing state of the environment using this uh, state file okay so in case if you have to see the list of state files you can use terraform state list and then uh, in case if you have to remove you can use terraform uh, state rm okay so this is very important one is terraform import and another is terraform state so the next thing is how does terraform handle dependencies between resources because for example if you are creating a resource uh, in aws or any cloud so one resource may be depending on another resource because like for example we will be creating a iam user and then we will be creating a vpc and then we will be creating different users so each user and its group should have a iam uh, connected to it and they should belong to certain uh, vpc and we will be configuring the subnets everything right so there will be multiple dependencies uh, between each component okay so when it comes to dependencies we have uh, two types of dependencies one is implicit dependency and explicit dependency so implicit dependency it is like automatically managed uh, in terraform when we create the resources itself okay so when uh, created one resource like it will reference to the other resource okay so that is implicit dependency and explicit dependency for example in case when it is used for example you have some custom resources and uh, custom applications or else uh, whatever it is and uh, like your uh, you know that it will not be automatically created like uh, and um, managed by terraform then you have to explicitly mention that in the state file okay so it is uh, defined using depends on argument okay so under the resources we have to define something called depends on okay so when we keep it as depends on once the first resource is created then the uh, second resources it will be created okay so this is also very important when it comes to managing terraform because in case if we don't define the dependencies properly uh, like in case if a resource is not created and if the second resource is created then it will uh, give a error like uh, the particular resource is not available or something okay in order to avoid that one we have to define the dependencies okay the next one is terraform workspace this is one of the key concepts because for example when you are working in a production environment you will not be working just in one environment like dev staging or prod okay so you will you have to maintain all the environments okay so like you should you cannot keep separate uh, state files for uh, each and everything so if it is like one server it is fine in case if you have like uh, thousands of servers and uh, you have very big uh, uh, configurations everything then it is like uh, very tough to maintain separate each and every configuration for each environment so what we can do we can create workspaces okay so what exactly it will do it will create it will keep separate workspace for dev staging and prod and then uh, it will just maintain the same configuration with the different variables okay so that we will have separate state files uh, for different environments so what happens in case if you have like uh, same configurations for all the environments when you create the terraform state file it will overwrite uh, the terraform state file so actually like then in case if you have to revert or in case if you have to do any modifications there will be conflict okay so in case if you have to maintain different environments uh, separately you can use terraform workspaces okay so in case if you have to create a workspace it is terraform workspace new and then you can give whatever name you want and then in case if you have to work on that particular uh, workspace then you have to just give terraform workspace select and then that uh, workspace which you have created okay and uh, the next one is uh, explain locals and their uh, use in terraform so locals are uh, like uh, named expressions okay so for example uh, if you have written some code and if you don't want to uh, repeat that code uh, 
like like no need of writing the same code multiple times okay then you can use locals okay so you can define uh, locals and then you can give the environment name for which environment you are using and then you can give it as local env and uh, owner okay so and uh, you can use the same locals tags uh, in the resources when you create it okay so that uh, you don't need to write uh, these uh, configurations each and every time it is like it will ma make your code dry means don't repeat yourselves okay so this is the use of locals so what is the what are terraform provisioners and uh, why are they used okay um, so for example if you have to run uh, any of the scripts locally or else in remote normally we will use uh, terraform provisioners okay so like you can um, use some shell scripts or something as well but uh, this is like uh, by default uh, used uh, inside the terraform okay so you can uh, just uh, create this provisioner and then you can uh, just give remote exec and then in the inline you have to give the exact command which needs to be used okay in case if it is a remote server just you have to define the uh, remote servers uh, details and uh, it will be executing that particular script on that uh, server okay so even these things can be achieved in ansible in case if you have to run something uh, uh, with respect to, to terraform then you can use this uh, provisioners okay so that you will be able to execute the script in the remote machines as well and then how does terraform manage remote state and uh, what are their benefits so this is like a very common question and uh, most of you might be already familiar if you are following the videos so you can use uh, shared backends like s3 uh, in case if you are using google cloud you can use google cloud storage and uh, terraform cloud whatever it is so you have to just define the backend uh, where the configuration has to be stored and then you have to provide the region where it has to be stored as well okay so what is the benefit of this one so it is a collaboration for teams and it helps in state locking okay uh, previously we used to use dynamo db as well even uh, now if you want you can use but uh, that is not mandatory because s3 supports uh, state locking now as well and it also helps in uh, backups and uh, versioning okay and uh, what is uh, terraform lock file okay so we would have seen some file called dot terraform dot lock dot hcl okay so actually this uh, file locks the provider uh, versions for example if we are using uh, aws version 2.6.0 and if you have to use the same version across uh, this project then uh, we have to lock that one using terraform lock files okay so because in case if we don't mention the particular uh, version it will always try to take the latest uh, available version of the provider okay so that uh, certain configurations or something may not match and it may give error okay so we can use terraform init upgrade uh, this up, uh, updates uh, provider version and uh, regenerates the lock file in case if you want okay and uh, how can you modularize uh, terraform configurations effectively so how we can uh, modularize so we can use modules okay so what is the use of modules like it, it will you can use the modules if you write once you can use that uh, across uh, any of the terraform configurations also you can uh, share it across uh, different teams as well okay just uh, you can create module for example if you are upc just give mains outputs and variables and uh, you can just uh, reference that using source okay in uh, in case if you have to use this module you can just give source and then the path where this module is there okay and uh, which in case under this model in case if you have multiple modules like for vpc ec2 s3 etc and whichever in case if you want to use vpc just provide vpc okay and uh, these modules will uh, help in uh, like um, using the same code across multiple teams just uh, you need to change the variables and it will be used okay and uh, how does terraform handle drift detection and correction so this is one of the key things okay so even uh, in kubernetes they will ask like uh, how we will handle the drift detection because we will be writing the configuration files and that is what uh, is expected uh, to run in the kubernetes environment or uh, in, in our case in the terraform environment okay but any of our teammates or uh, some other teams like they were uh, testing team might have changed uh, the configurations in prod or something okay so instead of uh, for example if you have to run like uh, uh, three parts and if someone by mistake uh, is running 13 parts so we are additionally paying for 13 parts right so this is a drift uh, this shouldn't happen even if they are testing they should have reverted back they might have forgotten or something we don't know right because they have done it from their end so in order to avoid that one we have to detect the drift okay so how we can detect the drift in terraform so in terraform we can use terraform plan okay so that we will know the current state and uh, what is the expected state so in case if you have to fix that one just uh, do 
the terraform apply so that uh, the additional uh, things which are created are modified it will be overwritten and uh, it will be fixed okay so this is how we handle the drift so in case of kubernetes uh, the thing is like you can use any of the github tools like uh, argo cd or something so that uh, you will be able to direct the drift and uh, so anyway it will automatically roll it back uh, in case if you are using the uh, github tools okay so how do you secure uh, sensitive data so this is one of the key things because um, uh, in case if you are not managing the secrets properly then obviously you are compromising your environment okay so that is the number one priority no matter uh, which environment or which tool you use okay the first thing is you have to secure your uh, configurations so in terraform how we can use in uh, terraform we can mention just sensitive equal to true in variables so that in case if you are passing uh, variable as uh, db passwords for example if you are referencing db password and uh, passing test variable and that uh, you are giving the type whether it is string or whatever it is and in case if you mark it as uh, sensitive then uh, that configuration will be marked as sensitive and uh, it will be secured okay and also like do not hard code those secrets in any of the tf files okay so in case if you hard code that will be exposed and also it is better to use secret managers like aws secret manager vault or uh, any of the azure uh, keywords so that uh, you can just reference that in the terraform uh, so that it will be more secure okay so it stores state securely so these are the interview questions like uh, these are like a very common like uh, out of these like uh, definitely 90 percent of the times uh, these questions will be asked so just uh, prepare this one uh, if you like the video please like and uh, subscribe to the channel okay thank you bye